plant reproduction. In this lesson, we'll look at the science and engineering practices of analyzing and interpreting data, constructing explanations and designing solutions, as well as obtaining, evaluating, and communicating information. Our cross-cutting concepts include cause and effect and structure and function. The life cycle of a plant. What is the life cycle of a plant? What are the stages of reproduction in plants? Initially, we have flower formation and then pollination, followed by fertilization, seed dispersal, and a new plant growing, which is then followed by flower formation, pollination, fertilization, seed dispersal, and new plant growing. Plant reproduction. Flowers are plant organs that are adapted for reproduction. In plant reproduction, a female egg cell called an ovule fuses with a male sex cell found in a plant called pollen. Structure of a flower. So what are the reproductive parts of a flower called? This structure is called the sepal. This structure is called the anther. The ovule is found below the sepal. The base is called the nectary. Here we find the ovary, the stamen is going to support the anthers, which is where pollen is going to be produced. And then of course there are petals. What are the functions of the reproductive parts of a flower? The stamen, it is the male sex organ. It contains the anther. The anther produces pollen, which is the male sex cell. The ovary is the female sex organ. This is where the female sex cells, called ovules, are made. The petals are often colored and scented to attract insects. Insects help in the process of pollination. The stigma is the part of the female sex organ that receives the pollen. The nectary makes sugary nectar. And the ovule is the female sex cell. So thinking about these parts of the flower, what are the male and what are the female organs? The male portions are the anther, the pollen, and the stamen, whereas the female portions are the ovule, the ovary, and the stigma. So what is the function of each of these parts of a flower? The anther produces pollen, the ovary produces ovules, and the nectary produces the nectar. So how does pollination occur? Pollination is the transfer of pollen from the anther to the stigma. Pollination can be caused by insects and by wind. How can wind pollinate plants? In some plants, pollen grains can be blown off of the anther and into the air. 
the pollen may become trapped by the stigma of another flower. If this flower is of the same species as the pollen, pollination will occur. Oftentimes, this is the type of pollination that causes people to have allergies in the spring and in the fall. Adaptations for wild pollination. Some flowers are adapted for wind pollination. These adaptations include very light pollen, a large number of pollen grains, a large anther outside of the flower, feathery stigma outside the flower, and they also tend to have small, dull petals, no scent, and no nectar. Bright colored petals, along with scent and nectar, would be used in order to cause insects to pollinate plants. Which brings us to insect pollination. How can insects cause pollination? Insects use their mouth parts to get nectar from the nectary. While reaching the nectar, the insect touches the plant's anthers, transferring some sticky pollen grains onto its body. When the insect enters another flower, some of the pollen grains on its body get brushed into the stigma. Adaptations for insect pollination. Insect pollinated plants have flowers that are adapted to attract insects. They tend to have large, brightly colored petals, a very sweet smell, nectar, and sticky or spiky pollen. The anther and stigma are found within the flower. The importance of insect pollination. Insect pollination is very important to the production of crops. Bees pollinate a large number of important crops, including tomatoes, peas, apples, and strawberries. Pollination is imperative to farmers. Populations of bees have been declining worldwide. The decline in bee populations is causing concern over food scarcity. Food scarcity is the ability of the world's population to access food. So what would be causing the decline in bee populations? This might be a real interesting research project for students. One of the things you might consider looking into is colony collapse disorder. The causes of colony collapse disorder remain unknown. Some possible explanations are the widespread use of pesticides, pathogens such as mites or fungi, or even some of our beekeeping practices. Let's dig into some true and false questions. Are these statements about pollination true or false? Number one, pollination is the transfer of pollen from anther to stigma. Number two, pollen is produced by the ovary. Number three, pollination can be caused by insects or by wind. Number four, insects pollinate plants by eating the pollen. Number five, wind pollinated plants contain very light pollen. And number six, bees are important pollinators. How well did you do on these questions? Fertilization. What happens during plant fertilization? Fertilization is the process by which male sex cells and female sex cells join together to form a fertilized egg cell. In plants, fertilized eggs become seeds. In stage one, during pollination, a pollen grain becomes stuck to the stigma. The nucleus of the pollen grain contains male sex cells.
In stage two, a tube grows out of the pollen grain. The tube grows down the style and into the ovary. In stage three, the nucleus of the pollen grains passes down the pollen tube. Once it reaches the ovary, the male sex cell fuses with the ovule, the female sex cell. This forms a fertilized egg cell within the ovule. In stage four, the fertilized egg cell divides and grows into an embryo. The ovule becomes the seed, which contains the embryo. The ovary becomes the fruit, which contains the seed. So what is the order of fertilization as we've just observed? First, the pollen grain becomes stuck to the stigma. Second, the tube grows out of the pollen grain down into the ovary. Third, the nucleus of the pollen grain passes down the pollen tube. Fourth, the male sex cell fuses with the female sex cell, forming a fertilized egg cell. And fifth, the fertilized egg cell divides and grows into an embryo. Seeds and fruits. Once seeds have been produced, they need to be carried away from the parent plant. This is called dispersal. Why do you suppose dispersal is important? If seeds land too close together, they will compete for space, light, water, and nutrients. Some seed dispersal happens with animals. Seeds can be dispersed by the wind and also by animals. The seeds may be carried away by animals and then dropped or forgotten. The seeds may look or hook onto animals and be carried away. The fruits may be eaten by animals. The seeds pass through the digestive system and out of the body in the feces. Seeds from different plants. What types of seeds do different plants produce? Different plant species produce different numbers of seeds and distribute them in different ways. The tomato plant produces seeds inside of the tomato. The sycamore tree produces a fruit with a seed on the inside along with wings for dispersal. An apple produces its seeds on the inside of the ovary. This can then be dispersed through animal consumption. The dandelion creates parachute hairs, which allow for the fruit with the seed inside to be dispersed by the wind and strawberries produce seeds on the outside of the fruit body. So how is each seed dispersed? As we've learned, dandelions are dispersed by the wind, as well as sycamore seeds. Apple seeds can be dispersed by animals, the same with tomatoes, as well as strawberries. Here's some dispersal data. We have the sycamore, the dandelion, the apple, and the tomato. We are given the type of dispersal, whether wind or by an animal. We are given approximate numbers of seeds per plant per year. 
along with average dispersal distance. Do you see any connections here? Which dispersal mechanism requires more seeds, wind or animal? And why do you think that might be? Why is the dispersal distance in apples and tomatoes variable? Consider a practical investigation that you might carry out. You could choose a variety of different plants and count how many seeds are present in each. You could use the information to analyze whether wind or insect dispersed plants produce more seeds. The figures here are for a whole plant rather than just one fruit or head. One dandelion head might produce 50 to 100 seeds, but a single dandelion plant can produce around 2,000 seeds. One apple has about 10 seeds on average. The number of seeds in one tomato can range anywhere from 15 to 50 seeds. So consider digging into plants, plant seed production, and dispersal to see if there's any trends.